Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Today's episode of the Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by our bonus packages. Please go to MikeO'MaraShow.com and click on the bonus banner. You'll get access to all of our bonus content, and even better, you'll be helping out TMOS. So please, quit sucking, and we thank you. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeO'MaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. You know, Rob, I know I was going to do the mailbag in the first segment here. We'll, right. we'll, we'll hold that off for, for right. a one break here because it's really top of mind and I wanted to talk about this. So yesterday, uh, I'm watching video. Uh, and by the way, welcome to the Mike O'Mara Show. Glad to have you along on home day. Hey. hey. What day is it? Hey, what okay. is it? Insurance companies <laughs> that run 750,000 <laughs> spots. Limu, emu, flow. Oh, I love the emu. Geico, gecko. I love, I love the emu. Well, you love it because you're forced to. Well, Mike, an emu in a sidecar is funny. You're forced to love it, though. Any it's animal in a sidecar as, is funny. There have been many, many. There are millions of commercials right. that are funnier than the limu, emu. But you love the Limo Emo because it is pounded with a sledgehammer. You're talking to an advertising major. I, I, into I, into your I brain. Thought was, I thought it was business. I, I, I'm not a big. Well, no, you can go to school twice, Rob, not just once. Um, so I would oh, say that. And, many, and Oscar, apparently, you can go to school a lot of times because I followed your career. That's true. Yes. <laughs> and now you're riding on the coattails of it. So I would say that. That, um, wow, happy hump day, yes. middle of the week. Yes, Mike, uh, I don't love the cavemen. Just speak as loud as you want. I'm just doing a show here. <laughs> I, I don't love the cavemen. I don't. I never really loved the Geico cavemen. I still don't get the, the Geico cavemen. Of, I'm not making that point. I am making that, yeah, you may love the saturated ads. That's what we will refer to Saturation, them yes. You may love the saturated ads uh, some more than others. True. I cannot stand the emu. I don't like porn mustache guy. I can save you. Lots of money. It's like, ha, ha, ha. What None about of them Flo, are funny. What about Flo dressed up as her family? Huh? <laughs> it's so uh, not funny. I like Flo they're so, on the Zoom call. I like Right. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's pretty you good. Know but what? you know what? It, you're getting beat over the head with it. And that's why it's. Well, how about the at and Have you seen the at and girl? The cute one the one that has home? the googly eyes. Yeah. The googly eyes With on her, her coffee her cup. Imaginary sure. friends. Let's let's go out. We're going to painstakingly audition <laughs> women to find the right level They're not threatening. of average. We're going to find the type of individual who will not offend or stimulate in any way will just be acceptable. That's what they're going for. Oh, they're you know not what it going is, for anything but acceptable. It's the advertising equivalent of playing Christmas music the entire month of December. <laughs> That's it exactly won't be enough to make is. you change the channel. That's that it. is exactly it's it it's is. safe and it's easy. These and by the way, I've I've rolled on golf uh, at golf course parties with the boys from Geico with the okay. ad guys because they were mm. based in DC. At the at the uh, U.S. Open, they had a special little area, and man, oh man, you want to talk about the kings of the world, the guys that think they can do it. Hey, sure. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, Mike, I'm it was go. established That's, in D.C. because it's yes. the government employees insurance company. There it was it made for people that worked in government. Mm -hmm. And now they control the world. They get they anything the they want. Yes. Mm -hmm. They get, a, you know, nobody sees this. Well, Except it, for, for a fleeting moment, that's it, the way it goes. Isn't fifteen percent uh, savings for fifteen minutes like? Isn't that great? Like we all want fifteen percent less. You know, and I'm a progressive are you, guy. What are you I'm holding out? Guy. Hope they're gonna they're gonna send Mike, you out a job I'm offer. A is that what it is? Guy. I'm telling you, they're all scumbags. <laughs> On the record, at that they are scumbags. all scumbags. All you know them. when they're scumbags? You know when the cute little gecko. And the uh, yeah, by the He's way, got a British love, accent, Mike. We would love to have that gecko. On the Mike oh, O'Mara yes. show. Yeah. We'd love to have the I'd emu love to say on the Mike O'Mara show. Liberty Bibbity. Liberty Bibbity. Liberty Bibbity. Yes. We are you farmers. Da, 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 da. <laughs> we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. Yes. yes. There you go, Mike. <laughs> Buy it. Brilliant. And then they get to run it for 40 years and some guy in the advertising department 
It's a, and by the way, I don't think they have agencies. I think they, I think they are their agencies. Uh, I don't know I enough about that. I think their ad agencies are in house. I think they have to be. We I did have the the, the CFO of Geico come and speak to our business school, uh, Johnny Geico cohort, and he smelled like money. I bet he was nice. He smelled like money, Mike. I Lots bet he of did. Money. I was like, Damn, I bet he did. That's yeah. pretty impressive. So it's money. It's money on top of money yeah. on top of money. Like he got They're out the of a car, that... made him money, and then walked on money to come into our moneyed classroom. <laughs> Floated <laughs> in on a <laughs> carpet of money. <laughs> the cloud of fifties. Yes. <laughs> but getting back to uh, the uh, the point. So yesterday I was watching uh, the video of NASCAR, right? And uh, the the drivers that were. Uh, running the uh, the car out to the uh, starting starting line mm-hmm. in uh, at the at the race course because one of the uh, I forgot the name of the uh, find out the name of the driver who was uh, uh, apparently the victim of a hate crime and uh, they found a noose in uh, this, was it Rusty Wallace was it uh, no, no Bubba Rusty Bubba Watson Bubba 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 Watson Bubba Wallace I'm sorry. Wallace I'm sorry Bubba Wallace Watson. Bubba Wallace. 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 Bubba Wallace Bubba Bubba Wallace Bubba Bubba Wallace Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace. I'm not an NASCAR uh, guy, Mike. I don't know what to say. Uh, well, here's the thing. But it was nice to see as a support for the only African-American driver yes. in NASCAR that they rolled this out after this right. heinous, horrible act. And uh, this is what I want to talk about. And then later in the day, the FBI, You first the news that you got on this is the FBI determines they have not found evidence of a hate crime. Then filters begin to uh, leak out that the story goes that this rope, this noose, was apparently, uh, it's been in this garage for prior to Six Bubba months. Wallace joining NASCAR. Right. Then, a story this morning, this rope was a uh, garage pull-down. I've seen mm-hmm. it. I've seen it in, uh, I've seen it in uh, garages everywhere mm-hmm. where you take a rope and you, you let it hang down so you have a little extra room to reach up high to pull the uh, garage down. And yes, it was in the shape of a noose, and it was around for a long time. My point is that, okay, this was not uh, designed for Bubba Wallace. This was not the way. And by the way, get it up there because I don't have it right now with my computer. So please, somebody get some information on this because I'd like to make sure I don't make any mistakes. The story, everything, I know the story. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. The FBI literally found out that it was a garage pulldown. And so... How I find out that it is, is on, this is what the racists love. And the people that are going to be first in line to share this, and this is why I I have so much blame to go around for this, the people that just hate Black Lives Matter and hate the Confederate statues coming down and hate the Confederate flag being eliminated from NASCAR and hate the idea of police officers and police chiefs marching with the Black Lives Matter. The people that hate this are so thrilled beyond description this is a when win, they a win. get it this wrong. Is a, this is a win it's a win. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's a win. And at the same time, they don't have the nuance to say, I don't care if it was a noose or not. I thought what the NASCARs, uh, the NASCAR drivers did and what NASCAR as an organization way ahead of the curve right. dealing with their fan base uh, is doing Head wonderful on. things yeah. of shaping the American culture. It was a win. Yeah, it, mm. You can't take that away. But don't tell that to the people that are saying, it wasn't, it wasn't nothing. It wasn't nothing anyway. Do you understand it's my point? Right Two fold, right right Two fold right. blame to go around here. The overreaction of whatever idiot decided that this was a noose directed at Bubba Wallace. That's a that's an f up. That is an f up. You can't take that away. Shouldn't have been labeled as that. Okay, somebody and I wanted a goddamn investigation of that, too, to know how that went down, Mm -hmm. because as soon as that gets out, as soon as that's found out, as soon as you know that that noose really had nothing to do with Bubba Wallace, these racists who are just dying to jump on people that overreact are using it for their power. So you can't screw up like that. All right. You can't screw up like that. You got to make sure 
that these things that are done, and by the way, it's not like you're going to have to stand in line and wait for another incident because they come every week in America now Mike, because the gate was opened up. It's so it, it's, frustrating is it to me. Frustrating, yeah, but I mean, the way NASCAR moved to eradicate what they were what they're eradicating. Totally they agree went. with that. And by the way, it's look, great, it's but not, I sorry, don't it's like not, to give anything I, 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 to I the haters it. out I, there, I, I, Oscar. I, I, I get it, but I'm saying if you're gonna if you're gonna get it any way you're gonna get it, take it that way, take it that way. And by the way, NASCAR are not so belev- uh, benevolent. I'm happy they're doing what they're doing, but each one of those cars is run by sponsors, and sponsors drive that sport. The fans help, but sponsors drive that fort. Like it yeah. really, really, it drives the fort to build the sport. Bottom line, right. But it's a uh, shame that this has to have uh, diminished. Yeah, but it's but look, think you can't bat a thousand. You just can't. There's no way. I, it's under, I understand. And I understand. And uh, but the point is, anytime. <sighs> yeah, there, it's, this is it's, this is like what Barack Obama went through probably in his entire career, and this mm. is the reality that we live in. You have to be better. You have to be more thorough. Be best. You Mike. have to be aware of it. You know that? You Let's have to be thorough. That. What's that? What? Be, I, said, be, I, said, be be I said be best. No, you have to be thorough. Yeah. Because you you I don't want these ass excuse me mm-hmm. to have any leverage at all. And the first time I read about this was on some white guy's Facebook page who put it up there after his picture of his guns because he's a redneck jerk who decided that he was excited about the fact that it was nothing. Well, it wasn't nothing. It's never been nothing. And, you know, as Bubba Wallace said, a noose is a noose, whether it was uh, before 2019 or not. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. But at the same time, you just can't. I hate to give fuel to people yeah, as, when you do that to diminish it. And it and it was a good done by NASCAR, no matter what. I was right. happy to see. Yeah, it. I, I mean, I, I really I, look, it, it's unfortunate. Yes. Um, does does it bring me joy that uh, this is like what is a, a do- is it a dog whistle? Is that the term, Mike? Yeah, dog whistles are used all the time. You okay. know, the president does it all the time. Okay, I mean, but is it? But is, is this does. being used as a dog whistle for everybody? A reverse like, dog whistle? Yeah, to see. To no, see hey, hey, I, don't, I don't. I don't know the phrase dog whistle. Can you enlighten me? Because I imagine it is something like a tone that's put out there that a call only some will hear. A call. Okay. A call to arms. Okay, I'm with you. All is right. it a call to arms for everybody? A dog like, see, whistle I told you. is a is a silent, a a a non obvious pandering to racial. Uh, insensitivity. That makes sense because a dog whistle is a whistle only a dog could hear. That, okay, I get it now. Thank you, Rob. I'm glad. Thank we, you. I'm glad we cleared that up for you. <laughs> well, I've not you heard the read phrase anything before. at all. Nope, never do. You've <laughs> never you've never heard a dog whistle. No, I've never, never heard, heard it used expression. in that context, and I probably could have figured it out. But I just wanted to make sure I understood what you guys were talking. Hey, I about. ask questions all the time, mostly about the English language, as I just did. <laughs> uh, look, I, you know, your frustration, yeah, I, I think, is is. It's being felt by a lot of people, but but I think if you look at the overall scoreboard, there's going to be moments like this. It's double speak, is what a dog whistle is. Okay, okay, I'm that's with you. what it is. Uh, used in political messaging, dog whistles work by employing language that has normal meaning in the majority, but can be implied or loaded to mean very specific so, things. In, in, to the logic is that t- people could take racial dog whistles, some, yeah, well. something okay. like right. this, and say, "See, everybody's overreacting." Racism doesn't exist. Right. It's not real. Precisely. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. That's what pisses me off. But I would so. say that that's, that's how you can tell if somebody's true feelings, right? I agree. If they get excited about that, that's how they feel about it. Because they're not able to project themselves to another type of people. That's the whole enchilada with a lot of America. If it ain't me... It doesn't exist. If it's not bugging me, it shouldn't bug you. So that's universal. where we are. That's, that's where, where we, we are, are with the pandemic. That's where that's we are, where with, we are with, with the COVID. pandemic. Hundred percent with the youth of America. Uh, right. Governor in the state of Florida coming out every day saying, "Oh, you know what? It doesn't matter to me. I'm a young person." So those are the. And then the governor says, "Well, it's mostly young people getting sick." Well, isn't that special? <laughs> And he's right. The majority, the mortality rate is not what right. it was with previous incarnations of the virus. Okay. I still think it's dangerous. But getting back to the uh, Bubba Wallace thing, it's that that that's why when somebody screws up like this, and I don't know, I would love to know how it went down. If it was Bubba Wallace, like him to own that. 
No, so, it was yeah, when I, I saw crew, that. His crew, I, I actually, the his crew found it. reported is before he even arrived. The crew saw it. The crew, somebody on the crew saw it. All right, and it, it ended up being something they used. Somebody yeah. decided it would yeah. be a cute thing to use as a pull down. Uh, you know, and uh, who knows whether it had anything to do with well, the, the, the race. I or guess, not. yeah. The the logic is, and I read the story, is um, that there's the FBI contends that there's no way these garages are assigned so so like uh, like a few days prior to the crew arriving. So there's no way that the the quote unquote noose could have been. The person with it could have known to leave it there pre, six months ahead of time, right. pre-planned, six to nine months ahead of time, um, to say, "Hey, this is going to be here when he arrives." Right. Yeah. And and also though, it might have been there a long time ago. Well, that, that's, that's what I'm uh, saying. What There's say. no. Yeah. It just could have been there, but it was a, a garage pull down. I believe that. Um, but still, I think the outcome and the and what, what the unity we saw on that track this past weekend was beautiful. I mean, when they, the fact is, I think you, they won a lot of fans, honestly. If you look at I it, will. I, from, I an appreciate outsider, it. from an outsider looking in, which is what we all are because we're not NASCAR guys, we saw people that in the moment they believed an issue was a fact. And the way they reacted to yeah. it, that's solid. I'm, and that was a beautiful thing. From a I'm business sorry perspective, that, very positive. Uh, here's the quote from uh, NASCAR. We appreciate the FBI's quick and thorough investigation and are thankful to learn that this was not an intentional racist act against Bubba. We remain steadfast in our commitment to providing a welcoming and inclusive environment to all who love racing. While uh, angered at those saying it was all a hoax and that NASCAR overreacted, Wallace said Tuesday night that NASCAR did nothing wrong in its handling of the situation when his team alerted NASCAR to what it found. Here's his quote. Uh, I stand by Steve. That's uh, the president, Steve Phelps, mm. NASCAR's president. Wallace told CNN's Don Lemon, I stand by NASCAR. The reaction to Tuesday's FBI announcement by some is what angered Wallace, who said he had spent plenty of time reading things on his phone. Uh, this will not break me. None of the allegations of being a hoax will break me or tear me down. Wallace told CNN, will it piss me off? Absolutely. But that only fuels the competitive drive in me to shut everybody up. Yeah, it's I get can imagine how he feels about it. You yeah. know, with this right now because people, you know, you just have to to process what it means to see a noose in a country where people were lynched mm -hmm. in the street without a trial yeah, yeah. in America. So that's what it is. Shut up. Shut up and move on. And NASCAR uh if it had been real, if it had been a real hate act of hate Look what they did for uh, as a message to their fans, mm -hmm. to uh, you know TV viewers all over the world by walking in back of that car. That doesn't change. That to me right. is good. That that's fantastic. That's inclusive. That's that's fantastic. And what I think it, NASCAR's handled it really the well. The term evolve or die, right? Right. Right. Are you gonna move with history? Or are you gonna are you gonna wither away? Right. Those are the questions that yeah, anybody it's, would it's have in a sport just, like that. Uh, the joy that people feel sometimes. About stuff like this, and you've seen it, uh, you know, with the hoax. It's a hoax. It didn't. It wasn't anything. It wasn't but anything. You gotta, you there gotta, is no racism. I ain't a racist. That's it. I was if you're feeling joy over that, you got to look in the mirror. That's oh, I guess God, that, maybe yeah. that's the best point I can make. Yeah, right I, now. Don't, I don't. If you're don't somebody know. who's excited about that, about the fact that it wasn't true, I think because this isn't really all that political at all. It's really not. If you're feeling a, ro a lot of joy over the fact that this turned out not to be a hate crime, if you think, see, if you're doing that. Look at the mirror and evaluate where you're coming from, because that. Why does it even, bring you joy? I don't think you, you, you can you label joy? yourself honestly. I don't. I can't speak to what it feels to, to think that way, but that you're a racist. But I think it's. I think you might want to think about yeah, your you sensitivity might, yeah, like, hey. to the issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like do do I really understand the issue? Yeah, you might want to examine why a noose would elicit that kind of yeah. reaction. That might be something you want to check out. So that's where we are uh, in 2020 America right now. And, uh, you know, it's a very heavy subject, but I just wanted to get that off I my chest. I thought we did a great job. Nice and I light. Get mad, I get mad at the people that overreact, which I do. Right. That, that it was like, what was that? And you look at it. But, I mean, if, if you've got, if you go, and I've seen, everybody's seen garage pull ties. Pull, sure. Pull ties. Yeah. Uh, yeah I remember my I grandfather. I can't make a knot. Like that. Like, honestly, I have, I, we had a little rope on my parents' uh, garage when it would break. And that little rope, we could never, it would just break, 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 right. break, break, mm -hmm. break, break. Yeah. Shorter, well, shorter, know, shorter. My shorter, grandfather, yeah. my grandfather yeah. had one. He, yeah. I remember he had one. It's yeah. a special kind of, it's like a, almost a line you'd use on a boat that uh, yeah. they, they tie those with. Okay. So that, that, that's fine. 
That's the way it was. Good. Why was it tied in a noose in the first place? Uh, somebody that probably didn't like his job. At NASCAR. Could be. You know, I don't know what it was. Could be. But the hoax thing. An on, Eagle Scout relax. definitely didn't do that. No. I. Uh, by the way, no it's been so long No badges were since awarded, right. My not, my not tying skill has uh, got to be, uh, I have to remind myself, it's not like riding a bike. I lose my knot skills every year. I have to refresh myself mm. on how to tie a bowlin, uh, round turn and two half hitches. Uh, I have to do that because tying boats is uh, is not something that comes easy to me. I've always been a, a bit of a you know, nad when it comes to I can, tying I can never boats. remember like just mentally how to tie a furniture knot, which is how you uh, bind stuff to the wall of a truck. Because uh, what happens is it will not over tighten if it, if it shakes loose so you can undo the tie. But if I close my eyes, I can do it because I've done it so many times. It's right called now, a furniture knot? We've always called it a furniture knot. Like when you have a mirror or a dresser that you tie against the uh, slats on a delivery truck. There's a special knot you tie. It's like a slip knot. I what thought the I? only, I thought the only knot you ever tied was a balloon knot, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We have to it's the Michael Mara Show. You can listen to the Michael Mara Show at www.michaelmarashow.com. <laughs> Stay tuned. For an outstanding entertainment program. <laughs> it's the Michael Mara Show. Let's get down to business. We're on the entertainment capital of the world. This is a very it's weird show. The Michael Mara Show. Yes, it is. Michael Mera, Rob Spiewak, Oscar oh, Santana. Man. And now, from his easy chair, here's Mike. <laughs> this is a weird show. They're all serious, talking about like racism, and then uh, suddenly the Rob plays this thing where it's the exorcist with a laugh track. What's going on? Uh, we are live for the Podcast Village Studios in our nation's capital from uh, Pungo, Pungo, Virginia, Lincoln, Nebraska, the Felony Flats. What up? I'm sorry for anybody that lives there. The felony flats of Spokane, uh, Washington. What is that? An area where people commit crime? Is that you know? It, I, I, I live there in misdemeanor manner. <laughs> Mike, no worse than Skaggsville. <laughs> Skaggsville, <laughs> one of the. I remember the first time I saw it on a road sign. <laughs> what? Ah. Huh? There's skags that live here. Uh, the felony flats of uh, Spokane, Washington. The Laurel Lakes of uh, Rice Township, Pennsylvania. Key West, Florida. There. Nice. Yeah, it's, see, that's it's, a town. it's the westernmost part. It's west. It's it's south. It, whatever. Uh, anyway, London, Ontario, Canada. The Michael Mara Show is on now. Uh, brought to you by Lightstream. Uh, refinancing your credit card balances can lower your interest rate. Simple. That can save you money. Simple. And you don't have to be a financial expert to do it, especially when you go to Lightstream and use this great website they have. Get a fixed rate credit card consolidation loan from Lightstream and you could save thousands in interest. Get a rate as low as 5.95% APR with auto pay and excellent credit. This is so much lower than the average credit card rate. It can be over 19%. Wow. Get a loan from uh, five to $100,000 with absolutely no fees. The application is 100% online, and you can even get your money as soon as the day you apply. I love this service. I love the website, and you need to check it out. If you don't, you're throwing money away. Our listeners can apply today for a special interest rate discount and save even more. The only way to get this discount is to do and go to lightstream.com slash TMOS. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash TMOS. Subject to credit approval. Rate includes 0.5% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply. And offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash TMOS for more information. And we thank you. Welcome to the Mike O'Mara Show. Just had to get that off of my chest. And now uh, something a little lighter because you have reached out to us and corresponded with us. We refer to this as the weekly mailbag. And I hold it in my hand right now. Because it's not about us. It's about you. Tighter and brighter for your listening pleasure. Happy Tuesday. Greetings, TMOSers. I work in a factory in Oakville, Ontario, Canada. I love our Canadian listeners. I love Canada. I love all things Canada. For God's sakes, if I could, I'd move up there. It wasn't so damn cold. Uh, from time to time... Ready to we attack. Have, we have... I know. You think they're attacking. They're all, all amassed all on the border. Time. Mike, 98% of them live within five miles of the border. Ready Why? to attack us. That's Ready correct. to attack. That's Thank right. You. From time to time, we have uh, ridiculous conversations just to pass the time. Last Friday, we took to Googling funny city names. One of my coworkers found Condom France. Insert. Well, is that the guy that sent it to you? Condom no, France. No, it's a weird coincidence. Oh, Ooh. okay. 
Fast forward to Monday, three days later, when I was listening to TMOS along Mike City shout-outs to start out the show, among Mike City shout-outs to start the show, was none other than, drumroll, Condom France. Mm -hmm. Hey! I don't know how you did it, but you managed to infiltrate the mind of someone who doesn't even listen to your show. (laughs) Bravo, TMOS. Bravo. Keep bringing the funny. Sincerely, Matt Bazinet, Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Uh, thank you, Matt. Appreciate yeah, that. This past Father's Day has just uh, so happened to be my dad's birthday. He has been listening to you guys longer than I've been alive and has been keeping up since the days of the Don and Mike show. He turned 46 and has been uh, me and my two siblings role model forever. I was wondering if you would give him a birthday shout out as I'm sure it would make this birthday a very special one. Uh, editor's note, we'd love to help you out. Coltrane C4 but uh, you never included a name for you or your dad. I know we're in an, an international crisis, but please try harder. Oh, and happy birthday, Dad. No name. No. All we got is a, uh, a suspicious email, Coltrane C4. That's all we got. Coltrane. Yeah. yeah good musical artist there. Hello, guys. <laughs> Whatever. Hello, guys. My uh, husband, Louis. Hello, Louis. Uh, A.K.A. Alpino Gioioa. Alpino Gioia. Oscar, Alpino how would you say Gio. G-I-O-I-A? G-I-O-I-A. G-E-O-I. G-E-O-I. E-O-I. E-O-I. G-I-O-I-A. 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 Alpino was his name. There was a name who's hard to pronounce. Alpino was his name. Oh, G. All right. Uh, he's a huge supporter of your show. I've seen the name before. Yes. We, uh, we've been doing this long enough, and we've got a small enough fan base where I know people uh, by, by name in many cases. Uh, we've had a tough year. Alpino has been steadfast and has never ceased his efforts taking care of our whole family. Is it a, hoi- is- is it a Hoya? A Hoya? Alpino Goya? Goya? A Hoya? Goya. 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 Not Goya. Delicious thing? beans from Goya. Hoya. No, see, that's you're, yeah, you're being, that's not good. We're not you're all not the same. supposed to do that. No, well, that's the brand name. I know. Uh, <laughs> anyway, brand. he's been our own Atlas holding up the sky for us. It would mean the world to us if you'd give him a belated Father's Day shout out. Thank you so much, Erica Giambruno. Okay, what are they playing with me here with these vowels? Let's go. The Erica Giambruno Alpino. Ha- Happy birthday, Lewis. Lewis, is it? Thank L- you. Is it L U I S or L U W? What's with the five hundred different names? Are they married or what? Is it L U I S? I don't like to. What is it? Is it Lewis or Luis? It's Lewis. L E W I S. Okay. Like Jerry and Erica. I assume <laughs> Erica is using a maiden name. To Mike, I would have to guess. What, I don't they, know. They can't all be Omer, Mike. They can't all be Omer. I go back to a simpler time yeah. when uh, people used to get married and the woman. <laughs> Mike. Respectfully, would Mike. take the man's name. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it was mandatory. <laughs> How long did it take Carla? It took my wife a year. You ever get the names of uh, anchor women on TV do it, too? Yes. Uh, that's it for our 5 o'clock news. My name is Rosemary. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget when, uh, when I told uh, Carrie and we told her mom that we were going to be married. And he said... And and what's his name? Spiwak. She said, "Good God!" <laughs> and Vanessa it Rob, is. did she take your name right away? She did. Okay, my wife took about a year, and she yeah. her email is still in her maiden name. <laughs> Carla took a while. Yeah, and didn't change. Still hasn't changed her driver's license. Uh, <laughs> greetings, Team TMOS. <laughs> <laughs> Recent conversations about sound quality. Oh, no. Raised a question. First off, you guys sound like you're in the same room. It's amazing. Some shows, uh, like uh, The Junkies, sound like they are on Skype with bad audio. Are they doing Skype? Is that how they're... Are they uh, Are they in different places? Uh, or are they're they all, all in their own together? homes. I, okay, I, I cannot confirm if they're using uh, what technology I'm not up using. there, so I don't... Yeah, they're all, but they're all in their own homes. Mm-hmm. If you guys are able to uh, sound like you're in the same room... Why do the big-time news shows have such big delay when talking to their field reporters or a guest from another location? Uh, why do we have to watch them hold their ear and nod for a few seconds while they listen to the delayed question? Seems like technology should have caught up by now. Please advise. Thanks. Mark from Alexandria. Mark, uh, there is a delay in our audio here as well. We kind of assume that when I say something, it's going to be 
a second or two so the guys jump in real early. They do a great job with that. And that's how we compensate for that. When you're doing a TV report by a satellite and you're far, far away, and far, far away can be Wolf Blitzer in New York talking to somebody in California or that's where the delay is. It doesn't always work that way. Yes, Oscar Santana. Um, so as one of uh, the podcast visitors team members that does a live shot from Dominique Foxworth's house at least two to three times a week mm-hmm. for ESPN, I can tell you that the multiple variables you have to account for is infrastructure, which is your internet speed, and if people can get fiber to their home, right. uh, and you can account for technology if and when the pandemic hit, if the companies move fast enough in order to acquire the hardware devices that are specialty hardware that they don't make in mass were sold out right away. So if somebody has that piece of equipment in their house and they're mm-hmm. not waiting eight months for them to be made again. Yeah, the uh, thing that's special yes. about our Podcast Village studios uh, that we come into is that I have fiber optic down here in Florida. Rob mm-hmm. has it in Leesburg. Mm-hmm. And Oscar makes the magic happen uh, up in our yeah. D.C. studio, our home base, with twine. Yeah. Well, that's how no, that's well, working no, out right well, actually, now. It's actually working very well. I would say that... The one, pro- the one problem we have um, with well, with well, even Bristol is there are people that it used to be like a 20-man control room or 20-woman uh-huh. control room. There's only six people that are allowed in that room. So these big production houses like CNN or MSNBC or Fox, where you see this long delay, there are literally people running from one side of the other to the room, depending on the control room. to Because they're the, limited with their uh, the, with their, those yeah. the resources. Right, right. That's the way it works. But I think we do do a good job, and we're yeah. really picky about it. Uh, hence the uh, me coming in when I wanted to see my son, and I thought it was low volume. Uh, I still don't get that. It's my own computer. It's my own trip. And there's uh, another I got factor it from all of you. There's another factor at play here: is that TV people, um, especially on-air people, are stupid, and <laughs> that slows things down too. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, moving right along, <laughs> fellows. I've been <laughs> fellows. wanting to compliment your use of the instrumental. Kimo Sabi as the bed for the KC JJ promo you occasionally run. I knew it from somewhere, but just couldn't recall where until I remembered we had the song on a compilation album that my dad got as a premium uh, when he bought Firestone tires. <laughs> now, you know, this is funny because Carrie's dad was a tire dealer, and I have wow. like 12 consecutive year Christmas albums. Merry Christmas from Firestone. And really? they're horrible. Just rotten. He said he's pretty <laughs> sure that Sukiyaki was on there, too. Good stuff. <laughs> this was a top 40 hit from, like, 1963. Soothing. It's very nice. Kui Sakamoto is the artist. Firestone. It sounds like the music. It sounds like the music you would hear in an Asian restaurant. Yes. Doesn't or, it? Or in a tire dealership. <laughs> I used to remember like going downtown, maybe older restaurants. Yes. Older Asian restaurants would play this There's kind of music. Something out of in the Mad background. Men. This is what they would play on Mad Men if somebody they walked into a, a like a Chinese restaurant back then. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you have we, to buy yeah, tires to, to get it. I think we better move on. Yes. Uh, Joe Parsons, uh, thank you for that. Hey, guys, I was listening to the episode entitled Pony Force and heard about the butter in Rob's fridge. He said he usually keeps three to four pounds. Yeah. Jesus, Rob, I just checked our refrigerator. And because my wife is a cake decorator and a cupcake decorator, our main refrigerator has over 27 pounds of butter in it. 27 pounds of butter, Rob. 27. Holy moly, four pounds? Jeez, please. You're a lightweight, if you'll forgive the phrase. Ha, ha, ha. Denny G. I'm down to under two pounds, so I got to hit the store Denny, this week. Denny, Denny G. Uh, dear Mailbag, please extend warm birthday wishes last Sunday to my friend Doug Carlson. By the way, ladies, he is single, owns his own home in a grove of pine trees. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny detail. <laughs> Operates a successful business, is a national barbecue judge. <laughs> Boy, you know, I wasn't going to date him, but the pine trees were his houses and the fact that he judges barbecue. Yeah. Uh, he has his own personal barbecue shed mm. and cares deeply for his parents who live just up the road. <laughs> Doug Carlson, good guy. Happy birthday, Doug. Is it really spelled D U G? It is. I've gambled uh, with Doug. He's a nice fellow. 
Oh, yeah. And happy 61st birthday. Uh, the leader, key leader of the TMOS pack, Michael Sean Patrick O'Mara, was yesterday. Salute. Two days well, ago. Monday. Sorry. Uh, Monday. Uh, Dirk Fastrick, Spokane Valley, Washington. Thanks, Dirk. One guy that sent in a birthday meme. So it's d- diminishing. I'm, I'm seeing signs of it's just fading to, to nothing. No one will know me in 10 years. Uh, hello, gentlemen. <laughs> you'll Alice just be alone McNeese. in the grove of. You'll be alone in the grove in of the pine, pine grove. <laughs> Alice McNeese turned five years old on June 14th. This has been a big year for her. She started her first year of school. Well, that probably didn't go that can way. I, can, can I? Can I? just quickly touch on something? Yeah. Yes. I, and and I'm not. We haven't talked about this. I'm not reading yes. ahead. I don't know. Yes. Did you feel like this year's birthday was a zero birthday, both online, like as people wishing you happy birthday on Facebook and in person? Yes. Okay. As a man whose birthday landed in the smack dab, like apex of the pandemic. Right. March 30th. Mm -hmm. We were in the middle of it, the thick of it. Oh, the heat. Yes. I usually get about a thousand birthday greetings. Right. I get roughly 230 during the pandemic. So yeah. if you saw a, 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 like a, a tick down on your birthday greetings. Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah, I did. It's Most not personal definitely. to you. It's people aren't at work anymore dicking around. Yeah, it's crisis. They're actually at home working and dealing with their families. So they don't have time to say, you know, I should wish my favorite talk show host a happy birthday. Doesn't make me feel any better. I'm just letting you know there are my extenuating everyone, circumstances. Everyone's in the barbecue shed. In yeah. the pine grove. Yeah. There's no time. It's frustrating. You know. Uh, but I, you know. It's, it's I, a, it I makes, it, it makes it. for a lonely birthday. Well, that and, you know, uh, here's my uh, glasses cleaner that I got. Oh, I didn't know it had a brush, too. That's fancy. (laughs) Seems like he has everything, Mrs. O'Meara. I don't think he needs anything. Well, no, really what you're missing here. uh, screen. Look, look. It goes right back into the... Oh, look at that. Oscar, don't you know that on Sunday night, Carla said, (laughs) hmm, we need another gift. Let's check the drawer. Oh, wait, I got this. (laughs) Oh look, a glasses hey, cleaner. Yeah. No, this is to this is a glasses caddy. Oh, it looked like something that might save your marriage. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you dirty birdie. You dirty birdie. Let me get back to the letter. Please, uh, let's. Alice McNeese turns five years old on June 14th. This has been a big year. She's got the first year of school. Learn what a pandemic is and learn why Black Lives Matter. That's nice. In years past, Charlie has stopped by to say happy birthday, and Donald Duck has sneezed for her. This year, I'm not sure who should stop by. Mayor for life, Marion Barry? Probably not a great time for that impression right now. Probably not. William Jefferson Clinton, Larry King. I don't know what the kids are into these days. I leave it to you. Uh, Thank you, and best regards, as always, uh, childless uncle Henry Jenkins. Let's bring in. Oh, Hold you have, on, a, you have an idea? My, uh, I have an idea. Although okay. I didn't prepare my studio the way I should, I have an idea. Why don't we bring in Winslow, our brand new dog? All right. Oh, great. <laughs> How sweet. I love Carla, really love little Michael, and hate daddy. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Winslow. That was good to Homer, see you. Homer, Homer. <laughs> it is fear. I found that out yesterday. You kind of oh, get okay. under a chair when I came into the room. Oh. Uh, nothing I can yeah, do about that. I used that to be that way when I was an intern, though. So I remember that. You were afraid. Uh, and I, I hold in my hand our final letter. Woo! Here it is here. Yay. Woo! Yay. Woo! Yay. Woo! May a diseased yak fly up your sister's hoop skirt. All right. Hi, <laughs> fellas. <laughs> Listening to Maddie's pinch hit home run on the show last Thursday. Regarding Pete Davidson, <laughs> reminded me of Earl Weaver's remarks on the value of Terry Crowley to the Baltimore <laughs> Orioles. Do you still have that tape handy? All right, there were uh, there there is a tape of Earl Weaver where he knew it wasn't going to air, and right. he was just doing it for in house. And Earl Weaver was a potty mouth. A lot of managers in baseball, baseball, the worst language of any sport. Truly potty mouth. So Earl Weaver is a guy that was talking about uh, Terry Crowley, who was this big fat player that couldn't do anything, couldn't run bases. But they, they it got out, right? How, do you yeah. know the genesis well, of how it Well, you got know out? what happened is that this is before YouTube. This is really before the Internet. And it was passed around cassette tape to cassette tape to, to cassette radio tape. stations. Yeah, and, people, uh, it, disc uh, jockeys and stuff like that. And so, Mike, if we can, let's take a visit. The Earl of Baltimore, one of the greatest managers of all time. With Earl Weaver. Hi, everybody. This is Earl Weaver with Manager's Corner. 
Terry Elliott of Washington, D.C. wants to know why you don't use Terry Crowley as a designated hitter all the time. Terry Crowley's lucky he's in f***ing baseball, for Christ's sake. He was released by the Cincinnati Reds. He was released by the f***ing goddamn Atlanta Braves. We saw that Terry Crowley could sit on his f***ing ass for eight innings and enjoy watching a baseball game just like any other fan and has the ability to get up there and break one open in the f***ing ninth. So if this f***er would mind his own business and let me manage the f***ing team, we'd be a lot better off. Alice Sweet from Norfolk wants to know the best time to put in a tomato plant. Alice Sweet ought to be worried about where the f*** her next lay's coming from rather than where her next goddamn tomato plant's coming from. If she'd get her ass out of the f***ing bars at night and go hustling around the goddamn street, she might get a f*** stuck in her once in a while. I Jeez. don't understand where these questions are coming from, Tom. That's about it from Manager's Corner. Go f*** yourself and the f*** with your show coming up next on the Baltimore Oreo Baseball f***ing Network. The Manager's Corner with Earl Weaver is heard 20 minutes before every Orioles regular season game. The thing that I love so bad about that is that someone yeah. took the time to produce it with right. the open and the close. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. It's fun. That's what fun is. That's what we uh, used to do. We used to have fun. Uh, we'll take a break and we'll come back with, uh, speaking of fun, more fun right here on uh, the Mike O'Mara Show. Every uh, This portion of the program brought to you by Liquid IV. Man, is a, it's a hot time in Florida. I am talking about my whole house is sweating and yes. dehydration occurs daily in three out of four people. You hear about it a lot, especially during this time of year. Summer is upon us. With Liquid IV, uh, you have the fastest, most efficient way to stay hydrated. Each serving helps you get as much hydration as two to three bottles of water. Plus, it's backed with potassium, vitamin C, and other vitamins to help your body defend against infections. Proper hydration can boost your immunity. One serving of Liquid IV provides five essential vitamins, more vitamin C than an orange, and as much potassium as a banana. It's healthier than sugary sports drinks. It has no artificial flavors or preservatives and less sugar than an apple. It's made with clean ingredients, non-GMO, vegan, and free of gluten, dairy, and soy. Plus, you're going to love the taste, and it's good for you. Liquid IV is available nationwide at Costco, or here's what I want you to do. Get 25% off when you go to Liquid IV. What is this music you're playing? It's Summer background? Madness by Cool and the Gang. Okay. Or you can get 25 it sounds like elevator music. Or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code TMOS at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you use promo code TMOS at liquidiv.com. So get better hydration today at liquidiv.com. Promo code TMOS. Every morning, I like Mike, to... I mix a batch with ice cubes. It stays cold all day. Of course, it never lasts that long. It's fantastic. Can't be delish. I want to thank everybody for getting back to me. Are you okay, Oscar? Yeah. Oscar looked like he was, was brooding over no, no, there I was, again. I was, I was monitoring signals. Strong for everybody. How are you doing? I want to make sure I. Uh, I you, you work hard. You yes. work as hard as anybody. Yes. Uh, running around. Uh, we tape earlier now because uh, you have to get off to uh, all your other duties. That, no, uh, you that's have not why here. we tape earlier. Why do we tape earlier? So you can play golf earlier. Oh, okay. I thought, but I thought you said it worked out for you as well. I no, don't have to take no, earlier. No, if we if we have to if we have a set schedule, it works well for everybody, so we all know what when we have oh, to. Oh, but be. I but yeah, I, we can but I really don't. It. Yeah, I don't we can plan have to. It. I that's not why I thought. Oh, then we'd I love to was, do nine. That'd be awesome. I, I thought I thought it was uh, we were doing it for everybody, but no. I I'm I've been getting back to you. Okay. Uh, how are how are you? I'm you, great. You've had a resting bitch face for most of the week, and I worry about you because I don't think you do it on purpose. But right. I think so, like the other day, I noticed it, and I mentioned it to Oscar if he was okay, and I've noticed it this week. You know when you notice me when I'm in a really bad mood? Yes. I notice when you're kind of brooding. You're thinking about things. You're looking uh, at your it's, phone. It's my. You're, it's I my. Make it's sure my you're thinking doing. face. That my what resting is bitch is every face. Is, is what's going on Earlier in your world? Earlier in the week, we had a, a signal issue that was very evident. If you were watching the the Facebook Live, like you won't mm -hmm. ever hear it on the podcast at all, uh, right. where you were dropping out, and I was right. concerned. I was like, "Holy ass, what's happening?" There's a bunch of construction outside our front door on Wisconsin, and there's mm -hmm. a building being put in literally next to the CVS. So a lot of lines are being cut during the day. We've had dropouts, and so, also we've had two bad days of thunderstorms in the DC area. And I hate to say it, but the Washington DC. DC infrastructure is so fragile that do rain will that? throw it. Do you I, believe I do. that's true? I have fixed I that. I have fixed that for our building. Oh, I went good. On, I went, good. I went on the fire escape 
for this old building. It was built in 1934. I went on the oh, rotting it's fire older, escape. Older than that. I went on the rotting fire escape, and I and there was a little latch that covered all of the coaxial coming into the building, that was open to the oh, environment. No! And I went out there, and I'll tell you how I fixed it. One, I found the cap that had fallen uh, the four stories down into what is the reservoir of our building. The ravine. The yeah. ravine. Found the cap, climbed all the way back up. Uh, I put it back on, and then I bought some Flex Seal tape, the ones you see on commercial. Flex Seal, yeah. the guy that, that advertises? Flex With Seal. the alligator tank. Yes. Yeah. He built a boat out of tape. Um, and I used, <laughs> I used that I have tape. never met an individual that wants to do home projects more than he, he well, does. That's well, incredible. Know, He's the MacGyver. The building, the building is in such amazing shape because it is over 100 years old, yes, Oscar. Yes, it is. Uh, Oscar and I, after a, a rainy season, one time had to go up on the roof and pick up the tar paper to make the water go off the roof because it had puddled. It had coagulated. It had become a mosquito breeding mm -hmm. farm. And Do it's not even tar paper. It's like rubber sheeting, and we had to dump it off the roof. I mean, that's how – it's a flat roof that was just holding water. That's how it is over there. My God almighty. So, well, so, so, so right now what I was looking at my phone is the power of our signal. If there, we didn't have any issues, but I hear construction outside. Oh, so you're getting nervous. Of it. And I'm like, yeah. oh, this thing breaks while we're doing this. I'm going to be so oh. pissed. I think that uh, you know you you actually kind of have to rely on yourself. Um, last night here in the house, uh, the temperature was eighty-one degrees inside oh, my dome. Jesus Christ! Hasn't first class air remember? conditioning fixed it? <laughs> Do you remember? Do you remember the name? They came out yesterday. <laughs> All right, you remember? Yes. All right, we're going to go down the line. All right, dishwasher. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Sink in the kitchen, broken. Jesus. Last week we talked about the refrigerator. Yes. $300 repair to the microwave. Washer dryer didn't work. 81 degrees in the house yesterday. Man came out to look at it and informed me yes. that this is not an inexpensive repair. Oh, my for God. The, for the coil. The coil has gone bad. It's oh, leaking. God. Now, this I, is a, here's a yes. song for you from U2. Perhaps you remember it. It's called, it's called Lemon. Lemon. <laughs> Lemon. How did these Fs know to move out right before everything was going to break? Well, that's why I they moved never out. saw them. I never had anything, but it's not. Now, this system is from 2012. That oh. makes it, what, eight years old? That's yeah. not. That's no. well within the shelf life of an air conditioner. How long system. do they have? 20 years? I think it's 20, 10 to yeah. 15 years. Oh, okay. Man, that's that's brutal. Is it Carrier? What, what brand? What do we got? What do we got working? It's Lennox. Uh, which that's, is that's a known uh, brand, right? I thought they made uh, dishes. I don't know. That's a different Lennox, I think. So uh, that's uh, that's what right? I don't know. That's with, like in uh, a wedding yesterday. registry like in yeah, the 80s. Yeah. Lennox. Yeah. And it's great. I know you, you overnight. can't stop a train. I know that. Overnight? Be beautiful. When sun goes down, everything gets cool. It's great. It seems to be working. Then about five o'clock till nine o'clock, right? It, it's the sweet spot of heat. <laughs> right. You know, that's what it is. When yeah. it's dark, it's not that hot anymore. <laughs> it's it's almost when as the if sun the sun gone. has something to do with it. <laughs> I've become desensitized to it. Well, I've become desensitized. Well, you would probably look. In fairness, if I was you, I'd be raging and stomping around that house. You can't. You don't you can't. have any. There's because no, you it's don't like have you energy because you're too hot. You, you sign the papers. You can't call the people back. You go, by the way, your air conditioner sucks. Is you there know? a warranty on the unit? Like an extended no. warranty? Oh, no. Mike, that would and be a great call. it wouldn't transfer if there was. That it would wouldn't be transfer a, to a new home. Great call yeah. if you could somehow figure out a way to contact the previous owners. I'm high. Mm -hmm. This is a... Uh, uh, Mike O'Mara, I bought your house. Uh, your air conditioner broken. sucks. <laughs> yeah, That's all it would do. That's all I'd be able to say to him. But, what's, uh, uh, what's a call? A call I mean, I think a service uh, call is roughly like, what, 150 bucks these days? Yeah, just to get yeah. them out there. Right? Yeah. So yeah. then... Um, oh, 95 for uh, the one guy. Yeah, 95 bucks. What's, uh, when someone tells you, can you get a second opinion? I will have to, but that'll cost money as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've got another guy from the same company coming out Thursday uh, to put a second set of eyes out from first class. Does does first class <laughs> allow you to apply the $95 to the ultimate repair? I don't know. 
does it open up into a larger suite? Who's handling know. this this charade? <laughs> I'm doing this one sort of. I did it yesterday. Yeah, lean and in, it's Mike. Just, uh, yeah, it's just yeah, uh, lean you know. into this one. And by the way, when it's uh, 100 degrees down here, I do feel for the guys that do that for a living. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you would think if something is if say, if something breaks that that's that expensive, a part that the the uh, a fifteen hundred dollar repair, fifteen hundred dollars. You would think if you're telling me that the shelf life of this unit is eight to ten, that's incorrect. Because if you have an over one thousand, that like, that means it hasn't worked. Like no, this long. this screams to, to to catch a contractor. Like really. Uh, twenty twenty seven episodes about this, or with. Uh, but here's the thing: I have used this company for over a decade. Maybe you got a bad phenomenal. album. Maybe management changed. Something's they, up. They, yeah. Well, this is the second guy that's come out and uh, taken a look at it, and that's why I got a third guy. And if I'm not satisfied with that, I'll get another company to get come Acme. here and take a look at Acme. it. Acme. And maybe Acme. they should change their name to Business Class. Yes, business class. <laughs> business class as opposed to first. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, yeah. Uh, but, you Spirit. know, hey, look, it could air be worse. I could have had a, Spirit air conditioning. I could have had a poopy birthday and have a dog that hates me that just came into the house that I'm taking care of for the rest of his life. Life is good. Couldn't be better. Pandemic 2020 FML. Hey, Hi, Mike. everybody. Look on uh, the bright side. If the house stays at 85 degrees, his life won't be that long. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, sir. No. His will be fine. I'm the one that'll be like, you know, where's Mike? He's in his easy chair. <laughs> we'll take a break and uh, come back with more on the Mike O'Mara Show. Welcome back Double to the Mike O'Mara Show. Uh, brought to you by Noom. Crash diets are always temporary. If you want to keep those pounds off, you have to adjust your lifestyle. That's why I love Noom. Noom teaches you why you do the things you do and gives you the tools you need to ditch bad habits and replace them with better ones. Noom is not a diet. It's a healthy and easy to stick to way of life. My favorite part, they've got a great food database. You're going to love yes. it. Ultra helpful when you're cooped up at home. It's the best. Oscar loves Noom. Carla loves Noom. You are going to love Noom and you're going to look better you don't have to change it all in one day. Love yourself, fact, people. Yeah, yes. If you try to change it all in one day, it's probably not going to be that successful. You make small steps, you make big progress. Sign up today for your trial at Noom. That is N-O-O-M dot com slash T-M-O-S. What do you have to lose? Visit Noom dot com slash T-M-O-S to start your trial today. That's Noom dot com slash T-M-O-S. And we thank you. I would like to pay a compliment to my bride. Uh, ah. Who is uh, Carla has found a niche. She has discovered a new career and she's doing very, very well with it. Uh, and initially it began as uh, getting out there and giving facials, which she still does and right. doing skin care for people. And as it is a, it's a passion for it, it has evolved into her uh, doing face uh, skin cons consultations online with uh, with tons of people and uh she's doing a great job and she's steering people in the right direction and she's working now on uh really it's Tuesdays and Thursdays for her and Saturdays that's that's the mm -hmm. and uh I have determined now that uh as much as I was looking forward to her getting back into the workforce to you know to to row the boat, yeah, so to yeah, speak, yeah, yeah, yeah. to to pull yeah. the weight, you yeah. know, buy those a few extra horsepower to the Omera machine. A little horsepower yeah, is yeah. good. I didn't realize that uh, this was now <laughs> going to be uh, Monday through Friday, <laughs> but Tuesday would be the day where she actually goes out and does stuff, right. and then. When she comes home, she's talking to people on the phone. She's working. She's directing them towards mm. skincare products. She's she's doing all of this, and she is loving it. But uh, and I'm happy. I'm proud of her. But I have become even more irrelevant than I've ever yeah. been before. Well, well Mike, yeah. the, the, look, you you are. How do I put this? You've been spoiled. Um, the first three I years, have. Yeah, the first three years mm -hmm. of a business are brutal. You know this as an entrepreneur. Yes, sure. uh, I understand. And this yep. is this is the time to make hay, right? While the she's sun, hustling. While the sun she's is hustling. out. Now, she's doing, um, she's she. Everybody's getting attention. It, it, but it, everybody, everybody yes. is getting attention. Everybody except me. Is this is this her master plan to uh, in the long run, um, you know, have a, a, a nest egg to leave you? I, I wouldn't say that's the case. Like, no, I, that's not, me, it doesn't no. work that way. No, have you no. looked at the actuarial tables? No, it no. doesn't work that way. Not to leave me. No, this is just you do a, the leaving, not her. No, she you put know. the roots down. She got a dog. She's staying <laughs> uh, right now. She uh, she's working with people. 
uh, her, you know, to, to what are have you a missing? space. What are you missing from her that she, because she's still in the home, right? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm missing companionship. <gasps> yes. Uh, Aren't you wow. gone most of the day? Well, yes, on, on the days that I play golf with my friends. Okay. Uh, but but then in the evening, you know, the quiet. Last night, uh, she worked up until right about 9, nine oh, o'clock wow. at night. Maybe some West Coast, uh, West Coast Has the gaming uh, slowed down? Uh, what, the gaming for what? Like trouble. trouble. Yeah. Oh, oh, we didn't know. We didn't play trouble last night. Oh. Oh. Yeah, no. you are I hear, a creature. Of I hear habit. in the background, she's going. Oh, no. <laughs> well, it's really bad of routine. You should have sex on a routine to skin. If you did have sex on a toner, sex a face wash. That's the way. I wouldn't do it to run away, would you? Are you doing that regularly? <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. I'll talk to you again. Thank you. And she comes in and goes, I'm going to bed. I'm just like, <laughs> there you go. Proud of her though. She's doing a fine Aww, job. Oh, but you're lonely. Job. Yeah. Well, I, uh, you know, but look, unfortunately, the financial realities are what they are. Yeah, you and can't I'm glad hold her she's back, working. Mike. Don't no. clip those and, wings. You know, whether, you, whether you're doing something you love, you won't work a day in your life. Yeah. I, 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 you so, know, what I have is my son, who's like, I'm bored, Dad. And then I've got. <laughs> <laughs> the new mutant dog. Yeah. So I might be in a dip. I might be in a little dip. Might be in a little, little bit of a dip do you right ever, now. Do you ever say to uh, Michael, I'm bored, I'm bored, bored son? Too. I'm bored, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, Daddy'd like to watch Scarface. Yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, can you just go somewhere with the dog? He can't. When, is, when gotta... is the best age to introduce him to a movie like Bonnie and Clyde? Uh, we're thinking now, speaking of that real quick, because we've got to take a break here. Yeah. I'm thinking there's that, did anybody see that Apple, I think it's Apple TV Plus uh, movie with Tom Hanks, the Battleship one? Yes. Have you seen the promo I, for that? I haven't seen the movie. I've seen the promo. It looks, It looks. Yeah. well, I don't think it's out yet. And it's really, it, I mean, Michael loves like tanks and mm-hmm. yeah. battleships There is and all a movie that. called Battleship, which by the way, if you're okay with like just general violence, but not grotesque, you're going to love yeah. it. You're going to love it. Really? And it, I can is watch. it based he on likes the game? That. No, there. So, yeah, it's robots. E4. Aliens come from outer oh, space. No, I want to watch it. I don't want to watch robots and aliens. I don't like robots and aliens. But it's, it's except, but, but except the, War of the Worlds. I love War of the Worlds. There are lots of one, yeah. there's lots of glorified battleship and overall. Uh, well, this one is like a World shots. War Two with Tom yeah, Hanks the, and the, U-boats this and is, that. There are no U-boats. There are futuristic boats in this one. Right. I can't okay. wait for the news story that Tom Hanks is related to Douglas MacArthur. Okay, we have to take a break. That's true. He's going to start promoting it. Wait, he, ladies and gentlemen, what he just said was sarcastic and spot on. It'll probably happen next week. We'll have yeah. to get the release date of it, and then when that gets closer, we'll track there it. will be a Tom Hanks story in the news. Uh, we'll take a break. Come back with news you may not need right here on the Michael Mara Show. He won the Welcome war. back to the Michael Mara Show, brought to you by the bonus packages. Let's talk about 12. Hey, Rob, yes. hit the 12 music. Oh, okay. Here we go, Mike. 12. Twelve is amazing. <laughs> it is. Twelve disciples. Twelve angry men. Twelve days of Christmas. Yes. The twelfth night. Twelve months in a year. And this Friday, it's the return of the TMOS cocktail party, episode twelve yes. point oh. Mm. That's a dozen cousin. All the guys, all the wives, and noted Florida zealot Todd Moore add a few surprises. Really? Are there surprises I know about? Not yet. I'll tell you about this. I don't. I don't know either, Mike. Yes, the bonus show is better than ever. So grab your favorite potent potable and jump in with us. It live streams for free following Friday's 7 p.m. show. But then paywall, baby. So you got to subscribe to the sixth uncensored TMOS Hell episode yeah. every week. Do it. Just click the banner at MikeOmeraShow.com. Also, there are nearly 500 other commercial-free uncensored bonus shows available to you for just pennies a day. Add a subscription. Just might cure your warts. Oh, so your many hideous warts. warts. It couldn't hurt. Uh, it's your passport to the Asport. Copyright 2020. TMOS. I'm Mike O'Mara, and I guarantee it. And now back to Knott's Landing, already in progress. News. News. Boo. It's a little loud, isn't it? Uh, we've already dealt with a killer virus, murder hornets, and now a huge cloud of dust hitting the U.S. this week. So this would be the year for a mythical creature to finally show itself, wouldn't it? Yes. This is big for someone who used to care about this a lot when I was a kid. A new high-def photo 
of what could be the Loch Ness Monster is making the rounds online. And uh, I looked at it. I did a dive on it. N- and? Nothing really definitive. Uh, some people think it's legit, but even the photographer is a skeptic. He took it last year on vacation in Scotland. Last year? Why are we seeing it now? Mm. Lazy. Uh, he just shared it online. You can... <laughs> lazy. You can... <laughs> you can only see its back sticking out of the water. And at first, it looks like it could be the size of a whale. But mm-hmm. uh, the guy who took it says he was only 30 feet away, and it was around 8 feet long. So the size might be an optical illusion. He thinks it was just a big fish or maybe a seal. Other people think he's lying and that it's photoshopped. Oh my! So, who knows? Maybe, maybe he was preparing that. his uh, his film and his reel for a legacy box. He's like, wait a second. I, I, can, make, I can make one of these uh, one of these fake storylines. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. sell this to the sun. And also, yeah. I'm not hearing enough lately about the Jersey Devil. I'm still worried about that. What's the Jersey Devil? The Jersey Devil is a mythical creature that lives in the Pine Barrens of New Jersey and will kill you. <laughs> what kind of creature of lives devil. in the uh, felony flats of Spokane, Washington? The TMOS listener. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel's been getting some heat for blackface sketches that he did back in the 90s on The Man Show, uh, particularly his impersonations of Carl Malone, Oprah, and Snoop Dogg, and he hasn't addressed it until now. He issued an apology yesterday, calling the sketches thoughtless and embarrassing, and uh, he admitted he didn't speak out sooner because he didn't want his apology to be perceived as a victory by, quote, those who equate apologies with weakness and cheer for leaders who use prejudice to divide us. He added that he didn't mean to be racist or hurtful when he did those sketches. He thought of them as, quote, impersonations of celebrities and nothing more. I can relate to that. I get that. Uh, And he said he's not going to stop criticizing social injustice. Quote, I won't be bullied into silence by those who feign outrage to advance their oppressive and genuinely racist agendas. I am with Jimmy. I think Jimmy Kimmel's a good guy. And I I like what he stands for. And And I think uh, he knows he did If you come from... um the world of like hot dog, um, hot hot dog, hot dog, hot talk, and oh, then, if hot dog was a format. Uh, I love I'm hot in. dog, hot yeah, talk, right. or even um, and he did. Jimmy Kimmel came from the radio, yeah. yeah uh, so that's that, where that he came from. or even like your morning show, zany morning show, which was Kevin and Bean, and right? Yeah. He was known for. Um, you you have stuff like we've said stuff that just yeah. completely is completely inappropriate yeah, you, in the you last could go twenty back years. In our careers, yes. and, and, and it, you would be stunned at what we say. The question uh, we is evolved. if you've evolved or not. Thank you. Right, that's Thank the you. key. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm in team. I'm on team Kimmel. Keep doing what you're doing. You're funny. You're sensitive. I think you're a good guy. That's the way I feel about Jimmy Kimmel. So that's that. Did you want to say something, Rob? I was going to say it sort of calls back to what we talked about at the front of the show is that he doesn't want this to be used as an opportunity for the people that really do hate. Yeah, to shut don't him down. Don't let it happen. Yeah. yeah. No, don't yeah. let that happen, Jimmy. A lot of wisdom. Uh, we all know that concerts, movies, and other large public gatherings are going to change. The question is how. According to Britain's Mirror tabloid, the music industry is hoping to get concerts up and running by the fall. And they might be uh, doing it by having fans walk through a disinfectant mist on their way to the venue. Uh, temperature taking and masks could also be part of the new normal. Now, why are you giving a look like that? Why? There's because no I think it might be, work. There's no way that can be effective because the way the virus spreads is when you cough and sneeze. But if you're what, wearing you a mask, it? if you're wearing a mask and you wear and you go through the disinfectant, it might be overkill. But that's uh, the way it is. Masks, man. I'm sorry. Do the mask if you yeah, want. Yeah, do the mask. I don't know if the mist is going to help. I like the mist. I believe in it. I don't know. I went to a couple Fall Out Boy concerts, and I think even before COVID, like maybe like a disinfected mist with a light pine scent might have been nice. Uh, The 4th of July is still more than a week out, but social media is already flooded with people complaining about fireworks waking them up, waking their kids up, or scaring their pets. Yeah. I stand on the side of people bitching about the fireworks. Yeah, I do too. Obviously, it's nothing new. It always happens around the 4th, but it seems like it's even more common this year. This is people that can't wait for their f***ing dessert, okay? Come on, Ah! you children, toddlers. Yeah, toddlers. 
New York City has had 426 times more noise complaints in June than the same time uh, last year, and it's up in other cities too, including L.A., Vegas, Chicago, and Boston. Hundreds of people in New York sat outside the mayor's mansion Monday night and honked their horns to wake him up just so he'd know how it feels. And yesterday he announced the city is cracking down on illegal fireworks. So why is it such a problem this year? Well, noise complaints are up in general during the lockdown because everyone's home and there's less traffic to drown things out and just wanting to get outside and blow off steam as a factor. But there are also fewer fireworks displays planned this year. That's not that has nothing to do with it. People just can't wait. Fourth of July, set off your fireworks. I'm going to go get that. There's a plywood building outside of the bar and I'm going back. Unless you're in Maine. I think it's uh, Safe Harbor. All no, I know in is Maine, two... we waited on the 4th. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but that store screams, let's do it again, baby. Let's do it again. <laughs> two <laughs> nights before, like 9.30, right? We have yeah. an early night. We have an early night, two nights before the 4th of July. And somebody goes, bat S, right in our backyard. <laughs> yeah, hey, want to wait. Let's send them off now, because I'm drunk. <laughs> and now, a little something something. A farmer from India said he spotted a snake slithering around his bedroom floor Monday night. He caught it. And he released it outside. The man said he returned to his bedroom and found three more snakes in his bed. No. He searched for the source of the serpent invasion and ended up discovering about 40 snakes living inside his air conditioner. Mm. Oh, no. Bad. Maybe that's what Ter- happened to mine. Terrifying. Anyway, yeah. uh, he said he was able to extract the snakes with the help of neighbors and release the reptiles in a nearby wooded area. A local veterinarian said a mother snake had apparently laid eggs Uh, inside the air conditioner, which had not been in use for several months, and they recently hatched. Oh, God. Uh, When asked about the snakes in the air conditioner, the uh, farmer said he thought they were really cool. Get it? (laughs) My God. They're really cool. Because they... (laughs) Because they've been chilling. Air, they've been chilling. Air conditioner. Yeah. Cool. They're covered with the Freon. <laughs> hey, uh, yes. talk about a bad coil. What? <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a break. Come back with the audio vault right here on the Michael Mara Show. Welcome back to the Michael Mara Show, brought to you by Talking Heads. Hello, I'm Michael Mara, and I like heads. <laughs> heads are good. Really, really fine. <laughs> you want it. You wanted it read like that, didn't you? I did. <laughs> I think they're really fine. Uh, but when they talk, I love them. And why not? You do, too. Because it's the new craze that's sweeping the nation. It's spreading like uh, makeup on President Trump's shirt collar. It's the TMOS talking head. A big chance to talk to the big three on TMOS. It could be you. So don't F it up. And you may ask yourself, well, how would it work then? It's easy. <laughs> Just join us on the show via Zoom, and for one shining moment, you can be one quarter by volume, not weight, of America's most beloved podcast. Same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. Uh, just send a sternly worded email to <laughs> rob at mikeomarashow.com with a few words about yourself and uh, all of your contact info. All of it with everything left in and nothing left out. And you may be hearing from us. Let us know. We look forward to seeing your head talk. Now get busy. It's the TMOS Talking Head. We want your head to talk. Talk, head, talk. Thank you. Let's open up the audio vault for today. This is uh, Wednesday, as they say in the Midwest. Yes. What are you going over, Friday? Uh, well, he might be by Tuesday, <laughs> but I'm not sure whether it's going to be Wednesday or Friday. Well, when are you coming over? Saturday? Yeah, Saturday. I'll be over Saturday. When did you get back? When did you get back? When did you get back? <laughs> and the Hall of Famer of the NFL, Sonny Jurgensen, proves it's also a North Carolina thing. Because he yes, says yeah. it as well. True, true. <laughs> yes, Sunday, uh, June 24th. Uh, this is Wednesday, June Wednesday. 24th. Take it away. Had an argument with my dad last night. He thought yesterday was Wednesday. So mm. time is moving at a different Today clip. Is Today is Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. It right. gets it's screwy it. with the Covey and does, being at it home. Does. It does. Dateline, Michigan, Mike, the Mooville Petting Zoo. Ooh, cow. They had a goat robbery. Oh, no. Six oh. goats were stolen. How will they crack the case? Well, when the teenagers put pictures of the goats on social media. One of the teens <laughs> had posted a picture of himself with one of the goats, and I think that's pretty much how we caught him. The parents and the teens Idiots. all went back to Mooville. Mooville. Mooville decided not to press charges. Seems other parents were going to take control of the situation with their teens. 
I love the fact a news story, Mooville has decided (laughs) not to press charges. The parents and the teens went back to Mooville. You can see that walk of shame, couldn't you? (laughs) Come on, put it in the back of the car. Put it in the back of the SUV. Pull your Mm. pants up. (laughs) Daddy. Also, in animal news, an 86-year-old woman in Rhode Island took her stimulus money and to cheer up her neighborhood, spent all of it on stuffed animals and set up a virtual zoo in her front yard. I took my stimulus money and I had built a zoo in the front yard. It's a mama tiger, so she's small. So I just love animals, that's all. People were walking up and down the street looking very sad. And I thought, well, what can I do? I'm handicapped. I can't go out there and do anything. But people love animals. Yeah, I looked at it and I know that people are going to be really happy after a couple thunderstorms and those stuffed animals are soggy. Oh, <laughs> falling apart. Oh, you're a heartless animal. Ah, just trying to think ahead. You know what? Mm-hmm. Statuary might have been better. <laughs> Statuary, yeah. Make him out of plaster. Uh, well, not plaster. Then you just right. get like paste. Well, let's uh, move on for Christ. They're closing down so many Starbucks, but they're also trying to stay healthy in these times. In an effort to create a more sustainable menu, Starbucks has announced it will expand the availability of oat milk. It's just one of the many options they'll always be out of. So keep that in mind the next time you drive through. (laughs) Mike, good news. They were lying. They're bringing back Unsolved Mysteries to Netflix, a six-episode run. Nice. Gene Baxter and Kevin Ryder were lying. (laughs) Isn't it sad? Now they're both gone. Yeah. Bean quit and and they fired the other guy. That's a familiar scenario, isn't it? (laughs) Is that for many? Yeah, one it, guy quits and then they months. fire the other guy. Like yeah. later. There you go. Sometimes they wait a year. <laughs> Mike, in, in in dramatic writing, it's called a trope. Uh, right. Anyway, uh, Netflix has dropped the trailer. Six episodes will drop on July first. I like that show. That's yeah. a good show. Yeah. So yeah. the truth. Oh, by the way, Patton's. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, Patton's show, uh, the, oh uh, gosh, I, I'll be there when you're out or whatever. Uh, I kind of wish I had it. We'll his talk new, about his, it tomorrow. His the, new uh, stand-up? Uh, no, no, this is the the show that's coming up on HBO that his wife did about the uh, Zodiac, not the Zodiac oh, Killer. Golden the, State Killer. The, mm-hmm. the Golden State Killer. And Patton's a big part of this. I think he's a producer of it. Uh, I'll give you, I'll, we'll talk about it tomorrow because Excellent. I want to give right. Patton a plug. So Maybe anyway, we can get he, him on to talk about, can we get him on to talk about that? I'd love to I will, do that. I will I'll reach out to him again. I will. Absolutely. Right. Uh, Mike, they, uh, the trailer for the new unsolved mission, it looks good and people don't know. Cause you go back, we are so flooded now with reality program and kill your husband mystery shows. This was the only one for a long time. So it's still the gold standard. So I will well, definitely be there. Okay? We have somebody that was taping a special next door. Oh, nice. Uh, somebody's coming in here. Come on. Oh, really? All right, come on in. Come on in. Here you go. There he is. Oh, there oh, he is. Oh, he's yeah, on there. Yeah, you. Yeah. Oh, oh, so sweet. Oh, oh, oh. Hello, so Winslow. So sweet. Winslow. Hello, Winslow. Winslow. Hi, Michael. Winslow. Hello, Winslow. 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 Hello, Winslow. Hello, Winslow. Don't, make, don't make eye contact with me. He's like, leave me alone. Look. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, love. Would you try using a what sweet if, voice? Yeah, what if you don't look Hi, at the Winslow. camera? Hi, Winslow. Oh, see? Hi, Winslow. He's, he's like, oh, I love you. No, he's not, Oscar. <laughs> no. The head is going back and forth to not look me in the face. <laughs> Does he smell sweet? Oh, he's so scared of Mike. It's so he really sad. is. Michael, take your dog, please. Uh, your dog? <laughs> I don't know what it takes to make a seven-week-old dog actually have all four legs locked. <laughs> Bye, Winslow. Have a good Pic- day. Picture of tension right is there. He stuck, is day. he stuck on is, is he stuck on little Michael like glue? Yeah. And Carla. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, well, that's what I said. Sweet. All right, go ahead. What's, what are some more audio? <laughs> <laughs> what are some more audio stuff? Let's close yeah. with this, Mike. You know, there are people... Bastard. Oh, that's... Sorry, I do. I hate him already. Mm, he's yeah. a good boy. You know no, what? He's not. It's gonna come around. You're gonna. It's gonna turn. Out, he's gonna end up. Well, I'm being nice your dog. to him. I pick him up. I try to kiss him. You saw what happened. Yeah, I know. He locks his it, legs. It's, it's, it's. I've never seen a neck get that stiff. Right. Away. Yeah. 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 There it is. He's Done got nothing the, to the dog other than the attention nice of a stockbroker. <laughs> yeah. He's a little puppy. Now that, I know. I'm gonna get the email. So, Mike, maybe if you try being a little more loving to him, shut up. Leave me alone. Thank you very All right. much. 
Mike, there are people who have benefited from the coronavirus. Uh, tomorrow, we can probably discuss how uh, the sex doll industry is actually doing quite well. It is. But also, because people don't want to stop on the street onto like uh, public bathrooms because they're dirty, disposable urinals are Good selling thing. out all over the world. Introducing Ew. the Travel John, disposable <laughs> urinal bags that are convenient, unisex, sanitary personal urinals containing Lixorb technology. Travel John products are also great for pee emergencies, and they're strongly recommended for emergency preparedness supply <laughs> kits and essential disaster kits as part of the combination disposable bathroom kit. So remember, if you're a prepper, or if you have a pee emergency, <laughs> or if you're just lazy, Mm -hmm. Get yourself a disposable urinal while Ew. you can. I bet Ew. they have them at that COVID pop-up store oh, I bet. in Miami <laughs> yeah, for a premium price. That's your match with Claudio Vault, everybody. Wash your hands. Have nasty. a good Wednesday. Nasty, nasty. Uh, that's it. I got to go make, uh, you know, uh, make up with the dog. That's what hey, I have what? to do. You know what dogs love? <laughs> what? Buy some fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right in the early. house. Spose right early. in the living room. Uh, <laughs> don't forget it. It's our TMOS cocktail party. We want to set a record this yes. coming Friday. We want people in the uh, outdoor a arena. Record. It's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah, a record. Fantastic. Uh, we got to get out of here. For Rob Spiewak, Oscar Santana, Michael Mara saying so long, everybody. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Before you go, please make a mental note. Today's show was made possible by the TMOS bonus packages. You can secure yours right now by going to MikeOmeraShow.com and clicking on the red bonus banner. Buy it or give it. Either way, you're helping out TMOS, and that's a good thing. Thank you, and go in peace. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. <laughs> so what do you want me to do, drop my pants or fire a rocket? I'm a phony, just like you. Bye-bye. <laughs>